back over the last few days at some eye catchers. A total of seven of them in total. Here they all are. Stand Guard, Caledonia Prince, White Fusion, Gabiano, Piscean, Newstead Abbey and Pass Muster. So seven of them, and we're going to kick off with a nine-year-old here, you, trained by John Butler, and a horse who's been in cracking form of late. Yeah, I wouldn't normally put a horse like this up, but I just, I just thought I'd stick him in for, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, um, because this was a really good time, the winning time of this race, considering he's won it on the bridle under a big weight. Um, I thought this was really impressive when you actually look at Sammy not beating anything of course because the, the third horse is really no sort of race and, and um, he's a lot better than the, the runner up but um, I thought I'd put him in because I'd love to see him race against La Estrella this winter because okay. I thought this was a terrific race and La Estrella as everybody knows is unbeaten at Southall and unfortunately if they do it's probably going to have to be an acclaimer or a seller because they're both rated above 85 there aren't any races for them this is something I'd go on and on about and bore people to death with but uh -huh. there aren't there aren't the races for them in terms of handicaps but because they're both getting on in years um, they might possibly meet in a claimer someday I'd love to see it because I think it'd be a really good race uh, this um, horse has been ma making hay in claimers and sellers hasn't he he has stand guard yeah just like La Estrella really and it's it's a good option for connections really once they get to that age they've got very little residual value other than what they win on the race course and um, it makes sense to run them in claimers and sellers because they're not really likely to attract huge amounts of interest but that horse is still clearly capable of very good class form and that was that was a really good time on on testing ground and that, that's taken into account as well that the fact that service has been riding on the slower side yeah my i I was a bit puzzled. Maybe I've been a bit too generous on my figures to it, but I gave him a very high figure on that, and um, uh, one that suggests he'll be very hard to beat in that company. But I'd love to see him up against La Estrella. So I, that was just a sort of a. Um, I just I just wanted to put that in rather than say, oh yeah, steam into him at one to three in a claimer next time. It was just one that I wanted to highlight as being a really good performance. Okay, Stan Guard then, who completed the four timer at Southall. We're going to stay at Southall and have a look at a horse trained by Joe Hughes. And this time we're going to focus on Caledonia Prince. Yeah, and he's got an exceptional record at Southall. And he's, I think he's done pretty well to win this, really, um, because he's, he's come round the inside. There's been a few horses winning round the inside, and the runner-up comes round the inside as well. So perhaps there wasn't a huge amount in it this day. But um, although he hangs across the track in the closing stages, I did like the way he won. Um, you can't make too much of the fact that the the second and third have come out and finished first and second yesterday because there were only three runners in the race but um, I think I do think the form is solid the time was okay and he, he just usually runs his race and I tend to think that winners at Southall don't get put up enough in the handicap they he's, he's gone up four pounds for this and although he'll be off I think he's probably career high mark, mark now I think he'll still be competitive I think he's just been taken out of the 0 to 70 bracket but he'll still be competitive in 0 to 75 events and 0 to 80s and it all depends what he comes up against next time but I'm sure he'll be He's very consistent on this service, and I'm sure he'll be thereabouts again when he runs there. I think looking back this morning, that all four of his career wins have come here, haven't they? Possibly. I've got him down in my head as a Southern horse. Yeah, I think he's only uh, one, one, one of the many. I, I, I'm sure you're right, but um, yeah, he is very effective. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you know, be interested in him on that surface, not necessarily elsewhere. OK, Caledonia Prince then, the, the second of those. We're now going to have a look at White Fusion, a horse who's changed stables, I think, and he was having his first run over hurdles, was he, for New Connections last time? Yeah, he's won over hurdles since. Uh, he, he won a, a little handicap hurdle. Um, but I thought I'd put him in anyway. This is his penultimate run okay. at Southern. I thought I'd put him in anyway because I thought he didn't get home over two miles here. And... Uh, it maybe we don't see him on the flat anymore. I don't know what David O'Meara plans to do with him, but um, if he does come back to Southall, he'd be interesting back over a shorter trip because he, he went through the race, certainly approaching the home turn, he was going as well as anything else, and then he gradually fades um, from, from the final two, two and a half furlongs, and he ends up being beaten quite a fair way. Um, I think he's just outstayed, basically. And if you have a look at his only previous run at Southern, it reads really well. He was a fair bit lower in the weights, but the, the race worked out really well. He, he, he finished second to a horse who ended up being rated in the high 80s, and the third and fourth finished first and second in a maiden next time. And it, was, it worked out really well, and the time was good. So I think he's one who, just put in the back of your mind, if he ever does come back to Southern over one, one mile and a half, something like that, maybe... Uh, that might be his trip. OK, White Fusion has gone on to win at Catterick since then and uh, quite a taking display as well when he was over hurdles.
just last week. So we've done Stunned Guard, we've had a look at Caledonia Prince and White Fusion. The next one we're going to have a look at is a horse trained by Jeremy Gask and this is Gabiano. Yeah, I seem, to be, I seem to put a slightly dodgy one every week at the moment. And this is the one who's also a horse that's perhaps been called a few names. And, and he's, he's been called a few names, Gabbiano. But he, I just put him in this week because I think there's been enough in his recent runs when he's, he's tended to start at quite short prices. I think he's been 92 or shorter for four of his last five runs. And after this run where he's finished... I think he's finished his eighth in the end. I just thought he might be a bit too big a price next time because I think he needs a strongly run race and just to come through horses. Um, I don't think he's a horse who necessarily um, steams through in the closing stage. I think he needs to come through horses, but I don't think he got the run of the race. You can see he just had to be slightly snatched up there on the home turn and they haven't gone a mad gallop here and they were never going to come back to him here. And he, he probably just doesn't have a lot of much a lot of room on the inside rail as well and you can see Jamie Spencer's trying to switch him and all in all not one to plunge in at a short price by any means because he's flattered to deceive before but if I thought he finished with a bit of running in there Spencer wasn't at all hard on him no, and no. Uh, uh, if he's a big price next time he might just be worth chancing if he looks like getting a strong gallop. And given that the stable were out of form largely through last year, this horse has come down the way to maybe isn't badly handicapped. Yeah, he's, he's, I think he's just been dropped another pound for that. He's not plummeted down the weights, but he's gradually edged down, I think. And uh, yeah, he's, he, as I say, he's a horse. I wouldn't be, if he's in a weak race and he's three to one or four to one next time, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be interested. But if he's in a, a big field with a strong pace where it looks like he might be able to come through late, maybe then. OK, so Gabbiano then. We're going to move on to the next and this time have a look at a horse who loves to come from the back of the field, loves to charge them down late, Piscean. Yeah, and this was the third of the six furlong races that day and it was the slowest of the three to the two furlong pole. And that definitely wouldn't have been in Piscean's favour because, as you say, he's a holder horse who, whose best form is when coming strongly at the end of a, of a truly run race. And um, he's also run into... Uh, the, the winner of this race, Tarouk, is absolutely at the top of his game and he gets first running him away and I wouldn't take anything away from Tarouk because I think he's in absolutely top form at the moment but Piscean just doesn't get the run of the race and he finishes really, really strongly and he's, he's absolutely at the top of his game. And it's also worth noting he's got a very, very good record for George Baker. Um, he's ridden him seven times on the all-weather now and he's won four and finished second twice and if there'd been a slightly stronger gallop he might have won that one as well. So he's one who... There's, there's a couple of listed races coming up at Lingfield this time of year, six furlong listed races, and there'll be horses higher rated than him in those, but if there looks like being a gallop, I'll bet he'll run a good race because he just looks like he's in such good form at the and moment. He, he does seem to be thriving. You look back to the Wolverhampton run when he beat York Glory on yeah. unfavorable terms, that was a small field and not a race you'd really associate with, with suiting Pisces. No, and he, he, I, I'd agree with that, but he ran him down really well in the closing. He looked like he was, he was well beaten and he ran him down in the closing stages, didn't he? And, um, yeah, he just he does look to be really, really. I was going to say on good terms with himself. I hate that phrase, but he's he's, 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 he's yeah he's, he's at the, he's at the top of his game. We can pull all the cliches out of the bag, but he's 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 in good form. Well, another one on good terms with himself is uh, New Stanabi of uh, David Barons, and uh, he benefited for the, the the switch from handicaps back to maiden company last time. Well, yeah, he's benefited from a lot of things, though. He, I think. Well, this was his first start for David Barron, a trainer who I'm sure all of us have got massive respect for. And um, we haven't seen the start of this race, but he, he missed the break completely. And they didn't go very fast, which kind of enabled him to catch up. But I still think the way he went through the race, he won't have a good time figure for this race because it was very steadily run. But he's put the race to bed on the bridle. He's against inferior horses, but there's just something about the way he went through it. And... Um, the, the actual eventual time, given the fact that he's lobbed along, wasn't actually that far behind some of the other races over the same course and distance that day. And every, I thought there was a lot to like about this. I know it's easy to get carried away with horses winning on the bridle against inferior opposition, but I suspect this horse has improved a lot. And I, where, Now, whether he needs Polychat to, to continue that improvement or not, I don't know, because his previous form was on turf. But... Um, I'd want to be with him rather than against him next time when he's back in handicap company, put it that way. So Newstead Abbey then in winning form last time out, first time out for David Barron. So we've gone through most of these, the last one to look at is a horse trained by Phil Kirby and this is Pass Muster. 
a token national hunt horse. He's a horse I've followed um, through his career. And you see, we're picking this up before they, just before they come to the home turn, I think, because he is going to fade out of it. But he's, this was his third run over hurdles. And his two runs since he joined for Philip Kirby have both been on softish ground. And he's gone well for a long way. And he's got tired from approaching the first in the straight, really. But for up to this point, you can see he's, he's, he's gone pretty well he's traveled strongly which you'd you'd expect because he's a decent horse on the flat he's a quite a good quality handicapper now he hasn't got a mark after this race um he did fall on his first outing over hurdles and the handicapper as is is, is perfectly entitled to as appears not to have given him a mark this week for this, this run but um so he might need one more run but he's going to be very interesting once he's handicapped on decent ground because I'm sure he's not a soft ground horse. His, his flat form suggests that he wants decent ground. He's with a yard who've done very well with horses they get from uh, from other stables and I think that once he gets some decent ground, there's a few in this race, worth looking at the video of, of this actually because there's a few that finished well back in this race that are going to be interesting on better ground but he was the one that I thought was, uh, he, he could end up with a, a mark a hurdles mark that's almost the same as his flat mark on what he's achieved yeah, so far yeah, yeah. they couldn't give him a whole lot more and, and he'd, he'd be very interesting on a sharp track on good ground um, and the, the first respect. two there look out of the ordinary almost and they've, they've come a long way clear they've come a long the way clear they've got in a bit of a battle and, and they've come a long way clear and that makes it very hard for the handicapper the problem is he's probably got to run again past muster because as i say he's he's, he's still not got his mark but um uh, and he was put into the race to be fair he wasn't dropped out the back and 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 not put in the race at all. He was put in the race, and he was he was fourth or fifth turning for home. But um, as I say, when when he gets better ground, I think we'll see a, a different horse. And he may well have another run. Just looking, he was going to get at Southern on the 18th of uh, hurdles again. So is that another novice hurdle? Uh, conditional jockey. No, it's a handicap hurdle. Oh, maybe I've maybe I've made a maybe I've made an error then. Well, what not I? not on. There's no sign on there. There's a, a, right, an official okay. rating for him. So if I click onto the race. Uh, pass muster. No, he's not got a rating against. No, I'm, I'm, I, it may be I've just missed it when I looked it up. So um, no, but the, the, all the other horses mm, have, but he hasn't. So yeah. it'll be strange. What day was that race? Uh, anyway, we could talk about this all day. <laughs> but, um, he, he will be interesting in handicap hurdles on good ground at some point. <laughs> so pass muster with the one for the notebook. Let's have a, a recap of the eye catches. Then stun guard, Caledonia Prince, White Fusion, Gabiano Piscean. Newstead Abbey and Pass Muster. If you were to sort of nominate to one, one or two as names to really remember, Hugh, which would they be? I did like Newstead Abbey. Um, he might be a short price next time. Um, and as I say, whether, whether he'll carry on the improvement on turf, I thought that was really impressive um, having blown the start. I, again, he's, he, he might blow the start again, so you've got to have that, that in the back of your mind. Um, and Pass Muster, as I say, when he, when he goes handicap hurdling on better ground. OK, they are the eye-catchers selections to come and also we might try and get one or two emails.